Hi, my name is Mei Pang. I'm 26 years old from Toronto, Canada. I am a makeup artist and a very enthusiastic tattoo collector. I'm mainly known in the tattoo world for my symmetrical tattoos. So basically the rundown is what you see on one side, you see on the other. So I grew up in a very hyper-religious kind of environment um, in terms of schooling in particular. There are a lot of TV shows and a lot of movies that I wasn't allowed to watch because it had some sort of magic or you know witchcraft in it. So I feel like I grew up in a very isolated um, kind of headspace and that my parents saw and they were like, you know what, we're gonna throw everything at her. She's gonna do jujitsu, she's gonna do piano, guitar, volleyball, basketball, which is hilarious because I'm five foot four. I tried everything, but I still felt that isolation and that's what led me towards just like finding my own little space within the internet and seeing what else is out there beyond what I know. First time. I think it was the first 10 minutes I signed up for MySpace. You know, when they, they like, here's some profiles you should follow, and I'm like, what's that? Who's that? I couldn't tell you out of the back of my hand who exactly it was, but it was definitely, you know, the uprising of the scene era. So a lot of those beautiful scene girls I saw on the internet, and the one that stuck out to me most was uh, Rick Gennist, Zombie Boy. That is, that's what clicked for me. Back when I was 18, 19, when I shaved my hair off and I started getting tattoos, I covered it up for my family for probably three to four years. I feel like I was quite lucky I can get away with it for so long because I, I left the house at, a, at an early age, so I didn't see my family all too often, but when I did, it was turtleneck season with the, the thumb holes. I had a wig on, I had everything on, and one day, my, I was with my dad at a dim sum restaurant and it was boiling hot and we finished the lunch, got back in the car, I had my little Hannah Montana moment. I was like, dad, I cannot, I'm literally perspiring. Ripped off my wig in front of him, I'm like, thoughts? And so he took one look at me, there was possibly 15 seconds of silence and he said, oh, I can finally see your beautiful face now sobbing. I was I was on the floor, feral, crying, because that was possibly the best thing my father could have said to me at that moment. And the tattoos slowly came along and they haven't said anything. They see it. They haven't said anything. I'm first generation Canadian. My parents are from Malaysia. When they came over here, they were uh, they had their own preconceived notions of what tattoos were like. They thought that once you started getting tattoos, you're gonna hang out with the wrong people, you're gonna make bad decisions, you know, no one wants to hire you. And when my family saw that, you know, I have tattoos and I can make money, have a job, have a great circle of friends and still live my life, they fully accepted it. And if I'm happy, they have no other choice to be happy. Okay, they're my parents. For me, when I got my second tattoo, and it is these waves inspired by Bridget Riley, it was the first ever artwork that I tried to recreate um, in middle school, and that would set me on the trajectory to get into the arts. So I got the first one here, and obviously I'm in love with it. I walked out, you know, I took a day or two, I like looked at myself and I was just like, I feel a little bit like, like weighted down on one side. So I called out my tattoo artist, I was like, hey, other side thoughts and was, yeah yeah go for it and so I came in came out with this guy and it's uh it's all she wrote <laughs> the rat on my back the tail is facing a little bit one way uh, but I consider anything that's on the middle of me to be centered enough and uh the text isn't technically symmetrical I feel like the first 24 hours of having a tattoo is me nitpicking it like just staring in front of the mirror and just like seeing the different dis discrepancies of my body. But as I've like learned over the years, my body itself is not symmetrical. 
I shouldn't beat myself up over it. And symmetry, getting it on my body, it's never going to be like bang on perfect. And I'm okay with that. And I've learned to live with that. I am a very impulsive person. I say to everyone, you don't get to look like this without being a little bit impulsive and experimental. I put a temporary tattoo once on my neck and then the same day I got this done. My head, I originally got these ones done first and I knew that I wanted something done. Like a, I just wanted a Chinese dragon and that whole process of me thinking about it was three days. The thought, book the tattoo appointment, get the tattoo. <laughs> so when it comes to me and my head tattoos, the sides of my head fell asleep. I was just having a good time playing my mobile games, playing Tetris, just at the top of the head. That was a visceral experience for me, um, where I was like this the entire time. I'd put my forehead down here as uh, Corbin was going over it. And it wasn't that long in hindsight, but the sound of the needle, the vibration, the fact that I couldn't see anything, I couldn't hear anything, I couldn't talk to anyone or you know, distract myself in any way. That was, it was a mental game more than pain where I remember I was like, I got up finally and it was, there was blood just coming down my head. I was just like, I did not know where I was. That was possibly the closest I've been to fainting during a tattoo. So when people ask me, they're like, oh, like I want to get my top of my head done. I'm like, are you sure? Maybe have a little think about it, but I don't regret it at all. I acknowledge the fact that my, the top of my head is, it's mainly line work. I've seen some crazy head tattoos and I feel like mine's just a little bit of a taste. So when I see like the shading, the pointillism and like my friend's head pieces, I'm like, that's, you deserve a medal, a plaque, something. I am a very neutral person when it comes to my tattoos and my clothing. I think I am a product of the internet decades ago where I read some sort of article talking about, you know, color, um, color tattoos on people that have like a deeper skin tone or a very aggressive undertone. So for me, I have a yellow undertone and I read that colors wouldn't show up the way it would want to, or it just, they said it wouldn't look good or, you know, red ink, for example, would has a higher rate of rejecting. So with all these floating in my head, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna stick to what I know. I'm gonna skate to one song and one song only, and that's black ink. So my makeup, because it's so temporary, you can wash it off at the end of the day, that's my time and my moment to create that balance, to play with color and inject color into my life. So that's why I love it so much.